All right, so now that we've learned a little bit about Google Fonts, let's actually use them. I'm going to open a window that I've already started to pull up, and I did a search for some stuff that I thought would be nice uh, to combine with Poppins, maybe as the um, as the body text, and uh, I was looking for some headings, and uh, I sort of landed on the the Lotto. Uh, type as the heading and I had looked through a bunch of different stuff and one of the things by the way I don't know if we discussed in the other one is that if I wanted to see what this heading looked like so that all of them were the same um, then you can type it and then there would normally be uh, a link down here that would say basically to make them all the same and so that's what I clicked and it's not there anymore but um, anyway uh, so if I come down here and I look at my two spe uh, my two options, Lotto and Poppins, um, and I click on Embed, what it'll do is it'll give me this. This is the standard link. And so I'd copy this whole uh, link reference. And I want to copy that. And then I want to jump over here to my HTML. And before my style sheet, OK, that's really, really important. Before my style sheet, I want to paste the uh, HTML link for the Google API, all right, for the fonts. And that's really, really important that it comes first and then the style sheet second. And the reason for that is because you have to go ahead and queue all the fonts up from Google before you can actually load them in the style sheet. Otherwise, they might not work the right way, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. And then the next thing that we need to do is put some stuff in our CSS. Now, the CSS file, if I wanted to toggle back and forth between index, HTML, and CSS, I could. The other thing I could do is I could go up here to view in brackets, and I could say vertical split or horizontal split. I like vertical split. And it'll say, open a file while this pane has focus. Well, what I need to do is come over here, not up above, all right, that's important because it won't work right. But down below in my project folder area, I need to double click the styles.css while this pane has focus. So double click that and it opens it up for me. Okay. And so now I can look at stuff side by side, which is really nice. I'm going to go ahead and grab that font information from the Google font page. And if I go down here where it says specify in CSS, uh, I can just grab this. I'm just temporarily going to grab both of these, and I'll show you what I'm going to do to consolidate them. And inside of body, I'm just going to paste that, okay? Now, I don't want to use both of these because the second one's going to override the first one. So what I'm going to do instead is consolidate some stuff and show you some different options that you can use. Now, I want the main font for the entire page to be Poppins primarily. So for right now, what I want to do is I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to toggle this into a comment. And remember, toggle is on a Mac, it's command forward slash or PC, it's control forward slash, so that that way it just toggles it out, but it's there for me to use later if I need to. This way it, it's going to show Poppins, and then what it's doing here whenever it's listing the font family property values is that in quotes it's putting Poppins. Now the reason that it puts it in quotes is because uh, for Google Fonts there are some fonts that have two words with a space in between, and you can't have that. So if it's in quotes, then it'll read that space as part of the name. However, just so you know, if it just has a single name, you don't actually need that quote. In fact, if you wanted to take a look, make sure that you've got your uh, live preview on and you can see, and you can see for sure that it did update it. It's got Poppins now. This is not just that standard old uh, font that, that was there before. So the next thing that we want to do is uh, talk a little bit about what this means to have Poppins, comma, sans serif, and the other things that we need to have there too. So whenever you're doing fonts, uh, the, the way that it works is that you put your most desired font first, and then you'd put a comma, so it's always comma separated, and then it, there can be a space or not. It, it, that doesn't really matter. It just can't be more than one space. And then you would put the next font that you would want in the event that Poppins doesn't load. And so by default, what it's going to do is it's going to say Poppins. And then the, the last fallback is going to be any sans serif that is the default sans serif for that person's computer. Now, the trick about the way that fonts work for the web 
is that if it's not on somebody's computer, then it is not going to show up. And that is why over here in the HTML, we have to put this link to the Google Fonts API and loading these specific fonts right here. And the reason is that we can't expect that every person who's gonna view your website is gonna have these two fonts uh, in their computers. It, it's just really unlikely that that's gonna be true. And as a result, what you would need to do then is, first of all, be able to load them from some web font service. And Google Fonts is a web font service. There are other ones that you typically have to pay for. Uh, but Google Fonts is free, so that's that's what's really nice. Uh, but then uh, what you would have to do is then call them up in your CSS after you've loaded them somehow through the HTML as uh, available resources. Okay, um, And then you just tell the CSS to use them. Now, if uh, you're not using a web font, then the trick is you have to do something that is going to be a web safe font. So let me show you really quickly. What we have is this website called typetester.org. Let me move this over here and I'll open it up. And typetester.org, uh, what it does is it allows you to view different options so you can compare fonts and it shows you the font down below. So um, and the other thing that's really nice is in this drop down, it tells you right up at the top what the web safe fonts are. The web safe fonts are fonts that are going to be uh, available both on a standard Windows platform as well as a Mac platform. And uh, also typically you're going to find them in Linux distributions as well. And that means that they just come natively with those operating systems and they're loaded into the fonts folder. So they should always work. So that's why they're referred to as WebSafe. And then you ha have this list of Google fonts that are not WebSafe. It just has all the Google fonts so that you can uh, just test them and compare them, which is kind of nice. Uh, you would always probably want to put some sort of uh, WebSafe font as one of your second fallbacks. One of the things that you have to be aware of, though, as a designer, is that you have a ton of fonts that get installed whenever you install Adobe products. And you cannot bank on anybody else necessarily having Adobe stuff. So you can't just go and pick fonts out of your, you know, out of your list of fonts that you get, say, from Illustrator or Photoshop or something like that, because it's almost guaranteed that someone's not going to have them. The, the exception would be um, if you're using Typekit, which uh, you do get a certain limited number of uh, free hits to use your Typekit stuff on a website, um, but once you put something up on a website that's going to get a lot of hits, then you really shouldn't be using Typekit, just so you know. Uh, Typekit, by the way, is a web ser font service, sort of like Google Fonts, but it's something that you have to uh, be a paid subscriber to. And if you have a Creative Cloud subscription, then you are a paid subscriber. And if you want to have uh, a website that is going to get a lot of hits, then you would have to go and purchase a different level of web font service. So anyway, let's look at these um, these web safe ones. Arial is one of the most common ones that you're going to see. Verdana is this one in the middle. Um, if I wanted to look at, you are never, by the way, allowed to use Comic Sans in my class. If you want a quick way to making the blacklist, then use Comic Sans. Otherwise, please don't use it. Georgia is an example of a serif that's really common, that's kind of attractive. The thing that you want to notice, though, um, about these is notice that depending on which font you choose, they take up a different amount of space. Like Verdana is a much wider font than Arial. It's a bigger font basically than Arial, and so it's going to take up more space. So one of the things that's really important about you know, making your typography decisions in the very beginning is that whenever you pretty much are able to decide the type you're using, and then you go and you style the size and the, the line spacing and the letter spacing and all those things, then you don't have to redo them later necessarily. So like if you just were to automatically use standard Times New Roman by default showing up, you know, without any styling, and then you go and you, you set the sizes and everything, chances are as soon as you pick the font you really want, you're going to have to redo all those sizes again anyway. So it is my recommendation to figure out what you actually want to use 
and then style it. There's another example of something that is uh, web safe. Okay, impact. And the other thing that it allows you to do is make a decision about how big you want it to be. You can other, do other things like text transform to see what it would look like in all uppercase. Uh, if you want to capitalize, uh, if you want everything to be lowercase, for instance. So there are a lot of things that you can do that are kind of nice. Okay, And if you get something that you like, the thing that's also nice about Type Tester is, all right, let's say I know that I liked Poppins. Okay, so let's let's see if I can find Poppins in the list. All right, so I liked Poppins. Okay, what I could do is I could say, all right, well, font size is 1M, and we'll talk about units of measure in just a second. Um, 1M is going to be the standard. It's basically the same as saying 100%. And 1M is approximately the same size as 16 pixels. Okay, so you can tell it how big you want it to be, right? You could say that you wanted it to be maybe 0.9M. It's a little bit smaller. If you want it to be um, the normal font weight, this is what light would look like. It's a little too light potentially for what I want, so I would just use the standard 400 uh, regular. And uh, if you wanted to uh, change the word spacing, or actually, let's look at letter spacing. You could do like um, a negative 01, that's a little too tight. You could see what it's like if you were to stretch the thing out, right? Or you could just leave it at its standard, which is usually the way you want to do it. Um, the line height, like maybe if you wanted more space in between, that might be a little bit much, but 1.5 might be too tight. All right, so you can adjust all of these things. You can play with the text color, all this stuff, right? Um, that's kind of nice. And then if you wanted, you could uh, go to CSS and then you could just grab all of this stuff and you could use this, right? You can copy this. You can either copy it and use it or you can just type it out. So if I wanted to add that, all right, I don't want all of this stuff. Okay, I don't want all of this stuff that's in here. So let's get rid of it. And like I said, I don't need most of these things. I liked the font size, right? And this is all longhand, by the way. I don't need letter spacing because I'm not changing it, at least not right now. I don't need any of that stuff, right? So these are the rules that I actually use. I can tab that in. And there, so now we've got something that's a little bit better. And if we wanted to look at our test, you can see this is our live update. This is how it starts to look. Okay, so that's how you can start to mess around with the font stuff. Okay, so I want to go back to the style sheet and I want to show you a couple of other things. Um, whenever you're in CSS, you can also create a comment. Um, I'm just going to paste this in so you don't have to watch me type. But um, the way that you start a comment is you do, you know, forward slash uh, asterisk and then you end it with asterisk forward slash. So any anything that's in between will be commented out, just sort of like the HTML uh, comment that I showed you over here, although the HTML comment over here is formatted differently. Okay. So anyway, uh, I want to make a comment that lets me know that the text styling is coming up. This is sort of like just getting your, your body rules set up properly. We're not done with this, but we'll just move on for, for the moment. With text styling, one of the things that I want to point out is that, let's just go back to our example here, is that right now all of the type is the same. And so if I wanted my headings to be a little bit different, this is my H1, this is my H2, H3, and so on. If I wanted those to be in a different font, and I just wanted to do it very quickly, I could have what's called a grouped selector or grouped rule. So I could do something like h1, comma, h2, comma, h3, and then I could put my declaration block and I could apply a single set of declarations for all three of those things. And one of the first things that we might want to do is go ahead and take this font family part that we had commented out here, and we could use Lotto for that. So let's take a quick peek and it did in fact update it. So you can see that this is a little bit different than what the text was before. Okay, so in the next video, we're going to continue to format text and margins, headings, things like that.